Hello and welcome to part 10 of my quick socket IO tutorial. This is the last part and here we are going to discuss how to build Python socket IO clients. Uh, throughout this tutorial we built a Python socket IO server and we connected to it with a JavaScript socket IO client. So uh, I'm going to show you an, equi an equivalent client to the one we've been using with JavaScript uh, but written in Python. Uh, so before I begin, I should note that if you are going to work with Python socket IO clients, there's an additional dependency that you need to install. So if you are going to use the standard Python client, and by that I mean not the async IO one, the standard Python, uh, you have to install Python socket IO with a client extra option. This brings additional dependencies that are needed only for the client. Uh, if instead you are going to work with the async IO client, then you have to add the async IO client extra to the install. Uh, so either way you will have uh, this, this needed dependencies so that you can write your clients. So let's, uh, let's open the standard Python client first, take a quick look. Uh, so you, you will see that there is a, uh, there's more or less a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, how we write a server and how we write a client. Uh, there are some minor differences, but overall it, it, it's more or less uh, the same. So instead of a socket io.server, now we create a socket io.client. Uh, for the events, we use the same syntax. Uh, the connect event, uh, actually the disconnect as well, they don't get any arguments in the client, uh, but other than that, uh, they work the same. Uh, you can see that uh, for, for the sum, uh, event that uh, that used a callback. In JavaScript we used a callback function uh, but now in Python we have access to the call option We combines uh, combines the uh, the emit with the callback all in a single call and it returns the result from the callback as a result from the call function. So, so we can take advantage of that when we use Python. Uh, connect error works in the same way as in JavaScript. Uh, so we receive an error object that we can print. In this case, it is a dictionary. Uh, and then, then we have the, the multiplication event, uh, which takes the data, same as, uh, same as in JavaScript, uh, really no difference. Uh, client count, room count, they all work the same. Here's user joined and user left, uh, which uh, indicate the users that joined and left the uh, the server and then here at the bottom we have a main function that uh, makes the connection so in JavaScript we used the IO function to make a connection and we didn't specify a URL because the browser has a, uh, a concept of a, a, a current URL and that's what it used so here when we connect we use SIO.connect and we pass the URL of the server uh, we have to indicate the, the host name and the port and, and the scheme. And then, uh, if you recall, we were passing the username as an extra header. Uh, in the Python client, this is easier. You, you just pass a, a headers dictionary with all the extra headers that you want. Uh, in this case, I'm taking the username. Uh, this comes as an argument into the main function. And here at the bottom, I'm taking the first argument from uh, from the command line if it's available and if not I set it to none and this is how we are going to test uh, a rejected connection so after we make the connection uh, I call this wait function uh, and this is the way the client works uh, because everything is event driven uh, there is really nothing else to do other than waiting for events so this this uh, SIO wait function will wait until the connection ends and it, it'll return at that point and then the application will exit. 
So this is the uh, the traditional Python uh, client, and the async IO client uh, is actually similar, uh, with the exception that uh, some of the functions that they emit and call are awaitables. So you have to use the await uh, option. Uh, so are the connect and wait. So these are uh, these are uh, coroutines, so they need to be awaited. And uh, for that reason, I made the main function also a coroutine. So um, let's, let's give it a try. So we have the server running. So, so we're now we can run client.py uh, with our arguments. This is going to be rejected. Uh, so now we can uh, we can pass an argument to get logged in and you can see that we, we are printing the same things uh, we're getting all the same results uh, both in the server and in the client so now now I have this client connected I can go to the browser <coughs> and connect connect the second one and you can see that uh, the, Py the Python client gets all the notifications as well so let's add one more There we go. So uh, this is this is the client. So uh, you can see in the description the the link to the code if if you want to uh, inspect the code, which by the way is available for uh, for all the parts. Uh, so uh, you can uh, you can inspect the code and play with it and make it yours. So I hope this tutorial was uh, was uh, very useful to you, and I hope you uh, you learned something new and you start building more Socket.io applications. Thank you and good luck.